Hey everybody, this is Red Viking Trucker. This is a Thursday afternoon. I am down here in Houston, Texas, finishing my 34 reset, and I've got uh, I've got a great interview lined up. Probably, I'm not going to diminish any other any other interviews I've done, but this interview is going to be so enlightening for so many of you new CDL drivers and the ones thinking about getting in this business. I have a gentleman on the phone. Uh, Mike, are you there? Yeah, man. Man, listen. Tell these folks, this is, by the way, folks that are watching this, this interview, this is the same gentleman you saw in video the other night that I, I bumped into at a QT. And uh, I was just telling him how, how happy he looks in that video, and I see that with these truck drivers. Mike, how did you get into the truck driving business? Uh, well, it, it was a fluke, actually, how it happened. Um, about 10 years ago, I don't remember exactly, uh, but I was going through a divorce. And uh, real quick, the the lead up into it, um, I want to I want to I, I lead with this. Uh, getting your CDL, um, I, I feel for the new drivers coming out here, one of the best things that you'll ever do. Ten years ago, when I was going through this divorce, there was a time that I didn't know how my power bill was going to get paid. I didn't know how I was going to feed my son during visitation weekends. Wow. I hope nobody, I hope nobody goes through that, but if, if you want to know what it feels like to, to feel just like a crap person and a horrible father, find yourself in that position. It's, it's not good. Wow. So uh, I just had, you know, I knew I had to change something. I just happened to run across a truck driving ad and a paper. Um, I didn't do the right things, as your videos uh, uh, say, I didn't do any research. I just kind of jumped in. So I jumped with a company that, that paid for my CDL school, and I was contracted for 12 months, which was fine. Let me, let, me, a, let, me stop you, let me stop you just for a second. You don't need to apologize for jumping with that company because, listen, if you're stuck in whatever you're stuck in, for all the people listening to this call, and you don't really have a way out because the money's not there, because the finances aren't in order, because you went through a divorce, job loss, medical issues, you got to do what you got to do to survive. So I don't ever say don't go with those companies. You right. did what you had to do to survive. You did what you did, had to do to survive, and you survived. But go ahead. But that's, there's no oh, shame oh. in that, brother. No shame at all. You were taking care of people. Oh, oh. C -c completely, completely agree with that. Completely agree with that. But yeah. If you have the option, it's better to do that. But, but it, like I say, it worked out fine. I was with that company for almost three years, so, so it was fine. Um, but move, moving forward, you know, that happened to me 10 years ago. I, I drove a truck... Uh, for a while, and then I actually went to the dispatching side, but I never let my CDL go. I always kept my wow. DOT physical, you know, I always went back. So a few months ago, when some things happened, not necessarily bad, but just some situations, there was a decision to make, and I decided to go back into a truck. You know, the money was there. Let me back you up one second. When you went into the truck the first time, you told me a story about how you kind of made the truck your home to rebuild. Oh yeah, yeah, I did. Um, my my wife got time. most. Yeah, yeah, my wife has everything. She, she got the house. She got the house. She got the car. She had the kids. Um, so I basically had one car, and that was it. Um, one car and no place to sleep, and the truck right. became your home for whatever number of months or years to get back on your feet. Uh, yeah, I needed all these things. I, I saw that ad and went, and I just said that works. So. And, and I completely lived out of the truck. Now, you know, I would come home and, and you hang out with a brother, you know, one of my brothers or my mom or whatever. But I also had a three-year-old. So it actually turned out that every time I would have home time, because I come home just to see him, it was always, Daddy, can we sleep in the truck? <laughs> so I actually, I actually, yeah, I actually, because you can't say no to that. Of, of well, course, you say yes. If you think of, if you think about that from a kid's standpoint, that's like camping with a cool big Tonka toy truck. I mean, there's nothing bad about that from oh, a kid's yeah. standpoint. <laughs> oh no, no, he, he thought it was the coolest thing. I mean, and 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 I used it as, uh, and you know, the, the company I was with, it was okay. That was what I drove when I was home, just to go to the store. I mean, because I lived here. Yeah, uh, and and it, and it worked out. And and you know that ten years ago, where I worried how my power bill got paid. From starting 10 years ago until the day that I cannot drive a truck anymore, I will never have that problem. 
I would never true? have to isn't, worry about that. Where, isn't that true? Where, yeah. where, we, where we met the other day at that QT, there are nine trucking companies within a one-mile radius. Well, that's what, let's talk about that for a second, too, because all these trucking companies, when you find one in an area, just look around. You're going to find like eight or ten other ones because there's a reason they're all piled up together because there's a shipping corridor or it's a shipping uh, start point. So there's, there's manufacturing happening. So when you find one trucking company there, there's a reason. There's a, there's a, there's a logistical reason. Then there's going to be eight or ten more if you just look, you know. Right, right. Yeah, and, 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 you know, where I'm at now, uh, once you have that CD, and I think this is very important uh, for all the newer drivers or, or thinking about becoming drivers, it's just important for them to understand. Once you have that CD in your pocket, getting a job is not a problem. It may not be the You're best right. one. It may not be the one you want, but you can make money. It's a, it's a phone call away. That's exactly true, and you will never, once you got your one-year experience, as long as you protect that CDL, you don't have any job security issues N at all. No. At all. Well, let's do this. Let's talk for a little bit, Mike, because the, the, probably the, the most juicy part of this conversation, this interview, is going to be picking your brain about what you saw and what you learned being a dispatcher, being on that side of the table versus the guys that are in the trucks and girls that are in the trucks, you know, that, that don't ever see that side of the business. I think it would be a great idea for any company to put a, the new dispatcher in a truck for a day or two and put a new driver in dispatch for a day or two so they could understand which, what each other sees. But what was the biggest thing that you saw? Oh, yeah, that, that is a great idea. And we actually did that. Uh, uh, and, and, and I want everybody to understand that this is from my experience. Every company does their load planning dispatching slightly different. Um, and actually, I got into it. Um, I went, uh, I come off the road, went local. Our dispatch uh, office was very short on help. Uh, they knew I had um, some education background, so they were like, hey, do you want to do this? And I'm like, sure, I'll give it a shot. Uh, I ended up working through becoming a dispatch supervisor, and my eyes were open. It, it's completely different on the other side. Um, and, and so try, try, to, try, to focus, try to focus on the top this, three biggest this, things you saw. This is especially important for the new drivers that are probably going to go with these really big companies. What first thing you have to accept is you are a number, you're not a person. You hear that a lot when you're out there. Part of that, you have to understand that's the way it is. When you're looking at a company that has 2,000 plus drivers, they can't remember everybody. They just can't. So the first well, thing you let have me, to do let is me ask that. you. Let me ask you this regarding that, because this is important for me, because I've, I've always assumed this was the case. When I call into dispatch, the very first thing I say is, you know, my truck number. I don't say hello, good morning, good afternoon. I just say my truck number. And then they pull, they pull your truck number up on the screen. What information, do they see your name? Does your name pop up on the screen when they pull your truck up? Yeah, yeah, all the information, that your load information, all that tied together, your name, your truck number, your trailer number. Um, usually they have your hours of service if you're on e-logs. Um, all, all, I mean, your almost entire profile pulls up. Now, well, the, the, the reason I ask that, the reason I ask that, Mike, and I want to cut you off again, but the reason I ask that is for all the dispatchers watching this and all the company higher ups watching this, it takes one second. And I have quite a few dispatchers in my company that the first thing they do is when they pull my my truck number up, they say my name and say, "What can I what can I help you with?" They don't just say what's going on. They say, "Say my name," and then. If they pick up and they say their name when they pick up, I call them by their name when I tell them what I want. Let's say the name is Johnny. I'll say, I'll give them my truck number. They'll give them a second to pull everything up. And they'll, they'll say, what do you need? And they'll say my name. I'll say, Johnny. I'll give them their name back. Because you know what? Even though we're a number, that little small thing, man, where you recognize there's a human being on both sides of that line, because we all get stressed for whatever reason, that's important, I think. And I know you say it's all, you're all a number, but it just takes another no. second to make that connection. No, no, I completely agree, and I was going to re reference that. You made a video where you talked about that. Absolutely, and, yeah. And, and that is, you know, you're the number on, on you know, from the get-go. You know, the turnover rate's high and drivers come and go. They're not going to remember you unless you give them a reason to. So that's the step right. the driver has to take. The driver has to step up. First of all, you know, use the names. Second of all, be nice. Even if you have the bad day, do not call in complaining and raising pain and cursing your dispatcher, 
Let's not. Oh, you get nowhere. Anywhere, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> nowhere, man. Oh, you get nowhere with that. Yeah. You know, B and I excuse the name. Become the person. If uh, the the large company I was with um, was based in Arkansas, uh, if you figure it out. That's great. Um, but I would always go by our home terminal when I was through through town. Yeah. Would go by, see my dispatcher, put a face with the name. He ended up taking me out to lunch many times. And like I say, we're talking a company that has over 2,000 drivers. Three years after I left that company, he called me from his cell phone because they needed drivers. He remembered exactly who I was, talked to me like we were buddies, wanting to know, you know, and of course he was just trying to get me to come back to the company, but he remembered who I was because I took the extra steps to not just be a number. Yeah, yeah. Yep. So believe that. Now, 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 granted, that doesn't always help you. The second thing I wanted to touch on is drivers have to understand that the dispatcher doesn't answer to the driver. The dispatcher has a boss that is going to chew his tail if he doesn't do his job. So when decisions are made based on loads and what loads you get, <laughs> that, that's, that's in a company's best interest decision, not a driver's best interest decision. So if those two happen to line up, that's great. But don't think that somebody's just picking on you or they don't like you and, or, or whatever the case may be. When you got a bad load or you didn't get as many miles as you want, that was a company decision because the company has customers to make happy. Okay, let me ask you this about that. That's a very good point. Let me ask you this about that. So what you're telling me, because, again, I'm only, I'm only a puppy in tall grass compared to you because you've been in the business over 10 years. So what you're telling me is these loads are not specifically assigned to a driver based on whether the dispatcher likes them or doesn't like them. It's kind of a com- – they, they, the, they get the load, and then the com- – I'm, I'm believing, at least, the computer looks at who has the hours, who has the time to get there based on the drop time, and the computer kind of assigns some of that. I, I'm believing. Is that true? Right. Well, it's usually in, in most companies, at least the ones I've seen and worked with, your dispatcher, for the most part, has nothing to do with assigning you the load. That is done yeah, by that's completely, amazing. That is done by a completely different department that even if you get to know your dispatcher very well, the load planner has no clue who you are, and you never will because you don't talk to them most of the time. Now, the, the wow, I didn't they know that. I, I, yeah. I, didn't, I assumed the dispatcher was the one assigning me the loads. I never knew that there was a load planner giving those loads to the dispatcher to give to me. Never knew that. Yeah. With, with the big company, that's how it went. Even with the smaller company I was with, except for the ad hoc loads, you know, the real short local stuff that we used to do that would yeah. pop up, a, a dispatcher yeah. will throw those loads. But, but as far as planning for an entire day of loads, usually the dispatcher has nothing to do with that. However, well, you know what? You know what you just you just taught me. Maybe I'm sending the pizzas to the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> now, now is what happens. It, what what can happen, and let's let's not fake ourselves. Favoritism does happen. Um, if if you know the dispatcher and you, you know you you've made that connection, the dispatcher knows the guy in low planning or the gal in low planning. So you know he can shoot it. They'll usually have some kind of inner office messenger, you know, on, on their screen. Hey, you know, I've got, you know, this truck. I need a good load. You got anything running out to Texas for him? You know, so they can influence what you get to a degree. It, it's just to a degree. Um, but that does happen. It, I mean, it, it helps. Um, what, what, you don't, what you don't want to be, and I was thinking this earlier today, if I owned a trucking company, I guarantee you I would hire you to run my load because I know, and this has nothing to do with watching your videos, I know that you make on-time deliveries and pickups. I know that. The reason I know that is because in your videos, you keep talking about you're on this Laredo ride. You keep running this Laredo back to the Carolinas. You don't keep a run like that, and you don't make the miles that, you, that you're making right now unless you're making on-time pickup and delivery. Wow, the okay. Worst, yeah. okay. The, the worst thing you can do, or you want to talk about not being a number, this will get you out of the number in a bad way. The worst thing you can do is tell your dispatch, hey, man, I need miles. Give me miles. I want to run. I want to run. I want to run. And then turn around and be late for pickups and deliveries. Yeah, that, that, is, that is an oxymoron, isn't it? That's just I, I, stabbing I, yourself in the chest. <laughs> I, I, will, I will promise you you're not a number and everybody knows your name. And nobody's doing that calls. And, and here's what happens. And this is what the driver doesn't see. That load could have been a hot load. So the guy that did you the favor 
to try to get you on that because you asked yeah. for it. He's in an operations meeting getting his tail chewed out because the customer called chewing his tail out, you know, the trickle-down effect. He's never going to do you another favor because you just made him look bad and got his tail chewed out by the owner in an operations meeting. That's a good point. Good point. Now, let's do this. We're getting to the 15-minute point, and I try to keep my videos around that. Let's let's try to – and, Mike, I, listen, I'm going to probably have you back on and do another – you know, we'll do some more stuff about this, this side of the, the table because – this dispatch world, these new guys hearing this, including me right now, really changes the perception of what you're, what you're thinking about dispatch. Let's kind of wrap it up just a little bit here at the last minute or two. Tell me now, you, you got back in a truck. What are the things you would tell these new drivers about coming out here? What would you tell uh, your cousin if they were thinking about coming into business? Let's kind of wrap up with one or two points about your best tips after 10 years out here. What would you tell people? All right. Uh, one, watch your videos. You actually have a really good grasp of what's going on. Um, I did not pay him to say that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wish you were around when I started. It, it would have helped. Um, look, I, I want to make this clear. Guys like me that's been out here a while, we, we have good tips. You know, and, and I, mean, I still, I'm learning every day. Don't ever think you know everything because you don't. But don't ever let a more experienced driver tell you what you should be doing in the overall picture. And I'm not talking about how to tarp loads or how to, you know, scale your truck. No, there's right and wrong way to do that. I'm talking about whether you should team drive or solo drive or regional drive or OTR. Once you get you got to make you got to make, make your own decision is what you're saying. Right, right. Once you get that time in, you know, once you get that experience, Mark, you know, when you got your experience. This isn't a one-dimensional business. There's not a right and wrong way to do this. You have right. to do it for your own reason. I don't. I could make more money running full over the road, but I run Monday through Friday, and I'm home every weekend. That, yeah. That's yeah. what's important. That's what's important to me, and I make sure, enough sure. money doing that. Yeah. So it's just one of those. Is you know, get in it. There's a lot to learn. So so don't take one person's opinion. Going, hey, this is the way to do this. Because a lot of people will try to do that. Yeah, and that's why I put that. That's why I put that 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 personality profile up too. Because if you look at who you really are from your personality answers that you answer truthfully about yourself, that will give you almost the blueprint and the and the roadmap to how you should be driving a truck. Whether you're driving team, whether you're driving solo, whether you're home every weekend or home every four weeks, that's that your personality is, is who you are. If you try to go against that. You're going to create all this subconscious stress on yourself. You don't even know why it's there, and it just builds up and builds up, and then you're going to be that person that snaps at dispatch, but it really has nothing to do with dispatch. You're mad at yourself and mad at the, the, the fact you chose the wrong type of driving, but you don't want to own that choice. Right, right. That is that is completely true. I've, I've worked with, with drivers that have done that. They, you know, they were, they were running, staying out all week. They become local drivers, and, and, and their, their attitude and personality is like it changed overnight. Because that's what yeah. they really want to do. Their their home every night was more important than making a little more money. So right. and then they realize they made a mistake. Yeah. Well, listen. Let's do this too, Mike. We're getting almost. We're almost at twenty minutes, brother. Listen, you've been invaluable on this call. I want to thank you for taking your time on your because you're in the middle of a run. You pulled over and had a thirty minute DOT. I appreciate you taking the time to do this call, man. We're probably going to be doing another video with Mike, another uh, interview. So. You guys stay tuned. Mike, I'm going to go ahead and end the call here, brother, because we're getting close to 20 minutes. I want to thank you again for your time. Folks, if you're watching these interviews and watching the channel, please support the channel. Download our Car Buyer and Car Leaser app, CarZar Pro. You can find it on iTunes and Google Play, or you can just download from the, uh, the, the website below. And do me a favor, if you like the channel and want more interviews like this from guys like Mike who can teach you and save you the, the mistakes and the errors, please subscribe, like, comment, and share. You can reach me at the email address above or the phone number below. If, if you reach me at the phone number below, always text me first. Mike, I want to thank you so much for taking the time this afternoon to be on this call. Oh, I, it's my pleasure. We'll have to do it again. There's, there's much more to cover. I know there is, brother. I know there is. Have a safe rest of your trip, and thank you again. Red Viking Trucker is out because none of us get out of here alive. Make your move. Thanks, Mike. Good afternoon.